Hello and welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today I'm going to um, do a pour specifically to meet the challenge of uh, the Acrylic Pouring for Fun Facebook group uh, March challenge, which is St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is this month. I think it's the 17th, am I right? Um, anyway, St. Patrick's Day to me is green and gold. Um, it's all about shamrocks or clover leaves and uh, little dudes jumping around the place with gold hats and pots of money <laughs> and and then of course comes the drinking and the Irish songs and all of that stuff too but today I would like to do the shamrock and um the reason I'm going to do the shamrock is one of the things that you guys have heard me say time and time again is I'm going to leave this one. <laughs> I'm not going to stretch it out too much. So uh, I've got here a record and um, I've covered the back with a piece of tape and I have a long time ago painted out the label that's now been scratched and I don't know whether I trust it to not go weird on me but that's okay um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just give this whole thing a good big cover of black um, and just let that spread I don't want it too thick I did water my paint down and it's already looking a bit thick already so How's it getting any better than that? What would it take for that to come out better than I imagined? Okay. So I'm just going to run that paint all the way around getting it right the way out to the edges and that's going to give us a base to work on because the other thing St. Patrick's Day to me is is a nighttime party because <laughs> uh, it does tend to include drinking and to me that's a nighttime thing so I'm doing it black Symbolism, man. Talk about how much symbolism can one girl fit into one painting. That's so funny. If you know anything about me, I am so not into symbolism. Um, so this is like defining symbolism to this nth, nth, nth degree. And there we have it. We have a nice beautiful pretty looking record with lots of air bubbles so let's pop those before we start and I'm just going to close this door here we go right so oh look you can see me in the reflection. Hello. Okay, so now I'm going to move that black out of the way. And we're going to come over here and prepare our pots. So a shamrock has three leaves, doesn't it? Or is it four leaf clovers that everybody talks about? <laughs> I suppose I should get that right, really, shouldn't I? Hmm. Let's have a look. Okay, so according to the internet, a shamrock is um, a three-leafed clover, the plant that was used by St. Patrick to illustrate the doctrine of the Trinity. There you go. I'm getting all religious on that. Isn't it just a drinking day? <laughs> How's it getting any better than that? So... We've got three pots for three leaves. My target is to do three smallish ring pours 
and just leave them as they're poured and not spray them out and see if they dry okay and if we can survive all that so I am going to start off um, with just a little tiny bit of iridescent medium in the bottom of the pot and the reason for that is twofold one I don't have any white or silver mixed up and iridescent medium can kind of vaguely um, stand in for either of those secondly it gives it that shiny shimmery luscious money kind of thought and thirdly it just give me something in the bottom of the pot so that the other colors can run out <laughs> um all right so next what i'm going to do is just put a bit of green oh that is still so thick i did thin that what's going on don't you love it when paint you you mix your paints up and you think yep good to go and then you go start pouring and they're like blub 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 how's it getting any better stir 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 now I'm not putting any silicon in these. I'm pretty sure I don't have silicon in either of these two pots. I don't actually need a lot of paint to be honest. Um, and I don't need a lot of paint because I'm using three pots. Then we're going to go with gold. And we're going to go back again with green. There we go. One, two, and three. So let's let's give it a go. Okay. So I'm going to want. One at the top and then one either side. And nothing at the bottom to put the little thing you want to. So let's start with the top one. And I'm kind of aiming around about to pour on the edge of the label. I can just see the tiny little ring where the edge of the label was. And I'm really bad at getting things to be centered and draw little circles. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I know I said I wasn't going to tilt, but that is just running away. Why is that running away? What's going on here, guys? That's why. You've got additional stuff on you. Ugh. I need clean pots so they don't have additional stuff on them. The other thing I've just noticed as I put that down is these tins, are, oh sorry this record is really quite bendy. So, okay so we have one, it's looking good, next, and the edge of that ring is there.
poor, poor, poor. Here we go. Here comes the gold. Oh. This is gluggy. Now this is one of the reasons why a triple pour like this is challenging if you're wanting it to look vaguely symmetrical. Although if people complain about it being not symmetrical, I'm just going to say you're not drinking enough. You're not drunk enough if you're complaining about my pouring. Okay. So what I want you to notice there is where the two piles of paint touched, we've got a kind of like a wall happening. I said I wasn't going to tip them, <laughs> but it doesn't work. Oh, <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to take and pour a stem. And I know that a shamrock normally they come in really close and we wouldn't have to do that. Blah blah. Okay. How's my shamrock looking? I like it. It's kind of a little bit wonky, but the wind's blowing and it's just tilted that leaf a little bit. That's all good. <laughs> now, as I said, I don't have any silicon in here, but I am seeing air bubbles. So I am going to just um, give it a little bit of a blow. With the torch. So this is a butane little flame torch. I'm not expecting any cells to be generated by this. I'm just popping the air bubbles. Popping air bubbles can actually create little holes in the paint, which look a little bit like tiny cells, but they're not. Um, all right. So there's my shamrock, it's going to sit there and, well it's probably going to sit over there, but it's going to sit and be, and dry and we'll see what it comes out like. Um, so as I pick it up to take it, I'll show you a close up of it, how's that? Okay. So there we go. Probably these should actually go towards each other and then a stem come down. See, look, perfectionist at work here. Do any of you have OCDs like that? <laughs> the 
because I've been playing with that, just quickly give it a bit of a, a whizzle with the flame just so that it can... Um... Alright, so now I just want to show you that because I just... See if I can get capture it. Where is it? There. You may or may not be able to see. Um, there's sort of like a little... A little patch just here that is I touched it with the flame and it's actually created a skin in that tiny little patch so if it cracks there we know what that was here we go guys all right I'm gonna take it away and then I'm gonna play play with the paint so what do I mean by play with the paint well I've still got paint left in here and I can't let it go to waste. Uh, so let's see what we can do. Um, let's do a kiss pour. No, let's not. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, didn't. This is what I should have done. Used a bit of cardboard. So why do I use cardboard for this process? Well, because I like to create um, greeting cards. Look at that, guys. That's just, just smearing, smearingly beautiful. Look at this. I like that. Now, one thing I've found with metallics, when you try and pick them up on the cabochon, is they don't tend to quite do what they were doing before. Has anybody else noticed that? I just think that these colours together are so delicious. And I blame acrylic pouring for that. You guys can't see what I'm doing. Um... I used to hate green. <laughs> actually, my, my transformation on green actually changed. Started when 
when I was working for Simone Melissus, who is the author and founder of Joy of Business. She bought me back some earrings from India. She's like, ah, oh. oh, and, and a pendant. She bought, she's like, oh, these were so talking to me. And they said, give, them to, give me to Michelle. And I looked at them and I was like, but they're green. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized in that moment that I had some serious points of view about green. Um, and I chose in that moment to change them. And you know what, guys? That is the, the way to look at it. If you are creating something that's not fun for you and you recognize it's not working for you and you go no i'm changing that then uh can you see what i'm doing here then that choice and and then you actually do something about changing it of course <laughs> but the choice to change it the recognition that you've got something going on and a choice to change it that is awesome I like it but it's not really suitable for pendants and well that's a lie Gosh, I'm a good liar. My judgment of it is that it wouldn't make good pendants. But you know, once they're dry, I still have the choice It's not quite as much fun without having silicon on it. All right, I've got two pendants there. I'm stopping. I'll be back once that's dry. I'll see you soon. Here she blows. Now, she's not completely dry. Now, today is the 13th. And here in New Zealand anyway. <laughs> um, and I pulled this on the 8th. Now, much of it is dry, but you can tell it's not dry because the centre where the hole in the record is, is still looking nice and round. Usually they collapse in and become quite a, um, a defined thing. And you can also tell by the shininess. See how in the middle there it's a lot shinier than on the edges. So it is drying. It's getting there. I've given up on waiting to be able to show you this. <laughs> um, so we have a beautiful painting. And it is almost dry and it hasn't done any really hideous cracks. There's one spot down in here. Let me show you that up close. Up close and personal. Um, well, we've got a bit of a interesting dotty pitted thing happening. Can you see that clearly? But I wouldn't call it a crack. And right out here where the where the edge of the thickness was and it has actually dried it's you can see that the, the paint is thicker but it's not actually cracked anywhere I'm actually really pleased with this um, so that's a big bonus I might leave a few more of my paintings thick 
in the future and see how they go too. Um, so there you go. It's, where are we? It's Wednesday today, so it's less than a week to St. Patrick's Day on the 17th. Uh, and you know what? It's looking good. Looking good indeed. So how did the rest of it come out? Well, this bit over here, you guys don't, don't think you saw me do this. This is, I scraped all the leftover paint out of all the pots and everything and had a play. Not sure if I showed you this. But it's quite pretty in places and it will definitely make a really cool card, greeting card. Um, so, if you don't know what I mean by make a cool greeting card, uh, in the description below there will be a link to me, me showing you how to make greeting cards out of leftover paint on cardboard. And then we had our pendants and these have come out really pretty. I like this, both of them actually, they've got this real interesting sense to them. This one could be a, let me, this one could be a landscape, if, if you put it one way or the other way. Um, could be all sorts of things. But it's very shiny, shiny, pretty, sparkly. And then the other one, I think it looks like a sea. <laughs> what do you reckon? C for Carol. C for cuddle. C for cat. <laughs> My husband's neighbour, when he was a kid, used to have a cat called C for. C for cat. C for cat. Um, but yeah, that one's pretty too, so it's all good. So guys, I have definitely learned a lesson on this. If you're going to pour thick, you need to wait for weeks for it to dry. <laughs> um, I mean, we are, end of summer, starting to get a bit muggy, so it may be that the moisture levels in the air is really high, but I don't know, five days and it's still not dry. That is pretty incredible, really. And considering I haven't, I've, all I've had over it is a cake cover. Um, let me zoom you out and show you what I mean by that. Uh, 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 no dropping stuff in the wet paint. Ah! ah! Okay, I'll get that out later. Um... So this is one of those pop-up cake covers where you pull the end and it expands. Oops, sorry, you can't see this. And becomes a cover. And it's great for um, keeping the fires out, but it also seems to also keep the, um, like break any bust, bust, bust. Blah, 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 blah. bursts of wind so you're not getting that harsh blow across the top that can dry out the top layer of paint so I'm going to go and pick that little offending piece of paint out of my painting see it maybe I'll just There we go. Slight dent. Unnoticeable if you don't know it's there. Um, and go and get this video edited and uploaded for you guys. So thanks for joining me. I had fun making my little um, shamrock. And how much fun can you have? Share what you're creating with green. The challenge this month is green on the Acrylic Pouring for Fun Facebook group um, in honour of St. Patrick's Day. So come join us, come play, and I will see you in another video. I adore you all. Bye-bye.